Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Audible is the destination for thrilling audio entertainment with next listen recommendations to habituate every type of thriller listener. The time is now more than ever to embrace the breathtaking, sinister, and shocking tales that have enthralled you, especially with brand new exclusive thrillers from best-selling authors who are guaranteed to keep you gripped. So, Ronnie, I recently downloaded Squeeze Me by Carl Hyacin, mainly because it shows a martini glass with a snake tail wrapped around it. I mean, what else needs to be said? And I am very excited to listen to it later today. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Do you struggle trying to reach those corner lashes when applying mascara? L'Oreal Paris' new Panorama Mascara catches every lash for corner-to-corner volume. Your sister uh, has been using this, right? She loves it, yes. They sent me some, and I gave it to my sister and my nieces. And actually, I looked at, uh, I saw my niece the other day and was like, your eyelashes, is that the new mascara? She's like, yes, look at them. (laughs) They were like fanned out. I mean, this is a great product. You can buy Panorama Mascara on Amazon today. Want to see life in Panorama with fully fanned out lashes? Now you can with L'Oreal Paris Panorama Mascara that creates corner-to-corner panoramic lash volume. Introducing the new Blink Mini 2, the tiny but mighty plug-in smart security camera. Mini 2 works inside or outside with a Blink weather-resistant power adapter starting at just $49.98. New features include HD night view in color with a built-in spotlight and a wider field of view. Stay connected with two-way audio and crisp HD video. Plug in Mini 2 just about anywhere around your home for the ultimate peace of mind. Shop Mini 2 at Amazon.com slash Blink. Hello and welcome to Watch What Crap Ins, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker and joining me today is the hilarious and wonderful Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How are Hi. you? Hi. What's going on on this fine Friday? Well, welcome to our, uh, not, nothing much is happening. I'm just happy that it's our final recap of the week and then we have the weekend to dive into um and we always we get to end with summer house which has been so good this season before we dive in uh uh, we got some live shows we are doing london dublin and birmingham and that's over in europe so that'll be late may and then in a month less than a month on may 3rd we're going to be doing netflix is a joke in hollywood hollywood los angeles not hollywood florida but los angeles at the kookaburra lounge so get tickets for all those things uh, by going to watchercrappens.com. Uh, also, be sure to join us on Patreon, where you can sign up on the Crappens On Demand level, and you can watch us, not just listen to us. You get access to our weekly bonus episode. We did a recap of the uh, House of the Dragon trailer that was uh, dropped recently, so we do a trailer trash on that. We will be recapping that show when it comes back on HBO later this year. So... Go check that out and get the full, full, full Crappens experience. So today, we are back in the land of Summer House, watching two separate couples that hate each other somehow trundle through this summer and attempt to love each other. Yes. Uh, so let's get into her, shall we? So we left off with Paige and Amanda gathering around Lindsay to warn her that she doesn't have to get married <laughs> to let her know like you don't have to do this and Lindsay's like um they're like little miniature lambs but they're not like red enough for me to be like i don't want to get married i mean he's made me a sandwich before so that's a good step 
like maybe it's like naive of me to think this but like just like like growing pains and stuff but like i don't think it's just growing pains like we're both willing to work on it which is like half the battle <laughs> it's like yep this is gonna be great yeah you're not naive at all right now Lindsay. yeah and um you shouldn't have to work this hard right no there should I be mean, no maybe if you've been no together battle. for a long time but this is what? When she says it's half the battle, there should be no battling in the first place. There should not be artillery on the field. Really? Because this show really does make it look horrible to be in a couple. And I think a lot of it is because they all feel such pressure to be in couples. Like on these shows where they have to couple up, they're like, well, better fuck somebody. I mean, it's especially like that on Winter House where it's like, if you're not fucking somebody, you are out, you know? And so they get this desperation about them. And I think that's tr- like the trying to hook up. It just leads to pain. You know, look at the bachelor. Is anybody on that show happy? No, no. I mean, some of them are still married. I don't know that they're happy though. Maybe they are. I don't know. Well, I will say this, that on summer house, uh, summer house does remind you that like people in, in couples can be very miserable. Um, but you know who's not miserable? You know who is having the best time of their lives? Paige. Because mm. she is just surrounded by mess. And she is just in a gossip fever dream right now. And she, like, the way she just gleefully bounces around from scene to scene. And it's like, everything she sees, she's like, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's just there's just more. And there's more. And there's more. Oh my god. I don't even know who to tell. There's just so much to gossip about at any given moment. She is she is having a very happy season. I've never seen Paige this light and airy. I'm glad you see it too, because I was like, wow, is Paige always like this? I mean, it's not like she's usually miserable. She's usually having fun, but she's usually got like kind of a more reserved eye rolly fun. And this time she's like parting. I mean, she's got Lindsay in pure misery, but also I think she's finally discovering that being friends with Lizzie, Lindsay is more fun because you get like a front seat to the dysfunction. <laughs> Yeah, you're not just watching it from afar. Then she's got Craig, who's kind of doing whatever she wants at this point. And then you've got a hot guy in love with her. You know what I mean? She's got like a hot guy who's younger and taller than Carl and probably would not relegate her to Wednesday dates. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's just she's killing it all over. She's killing it. She's really like she's having her moment. So she will tell you she's dressed in one of these diary room sessions, I wanted art for my room one time in LA and I, you know, couldn't think of what, well, you know, art's hard to pick. It's like, do I match the room? Do I match the colors? I'm not good with picking art. And also I'm not rich. So it's always getting stuff from Ross. So I got some pictures from Ross and I was like, these look terrible. So I took brown paper, like brown wrapping paper, you know, paper, just brown paper. And I crumpled it up. And then I paper mache it over the canvases and like kind of swirled them. And that was the art. And that's how Paige is dressed. <laughs> it's like, she just looks like my Ross dress for less paper mache art. So that's not great. But um, otherwise, I mean, 10 out of 10 doing great, yeah. having a great season. So she's like, um, I get that relationships are hard work, uh, but at some point, like, punch out. Like, I think deep down, Lindsay just knows she shouldn't marry this guy. But I think she wants this, like, fairy tale of, like, oh, he was my friend for so long, and I got fucked over by so many guys, and then we met, and it sounds, like, so beautiful. And, like, I so would watch that in Lifetime, and I really would. But this is, like, real life, and you guys, like, don't like each other. So, <laughs> I mean, it's great. Keep doing it. I love it. It's, like, so so fun. But for me, but bad for you, but fun for me. So Amanda's like, here's to no fight Fridays. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and now Craig is uh, giving Carl some advice. He's like, um, hey, Carl, just like, don't let it get to a point where like, um, you like start to resent like an imbalance of effort, you know? <sighs> Carl's like, yeah, no, I, I 100% agree. I, I 100% agree. I, I actually, I have to agree because... I'm afraid to disagree with anyone. And Craig's like, yeah, it just it sounds like you're doing a lot of concessions. And I'm not saying she isn't, you know, making concessions, but dot, 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 dot. Um, I hate this narrative. This still makes me crazy with Carl. It still is making, and he's doing it a lot in this episode where it's like, oh, imbalance of effort. Yeah. Yeah. It's really tough on me. I can't with the imbalance of effort thing. Listen, you can say a lot about Lindsay, but she makes an effort. 
Okay. She's mm-hmm. maybe it's way too much. I think I think of Lindsay as an overabundance of effort. Like it's too much effort. It's more effort than this shit requires, you know? Hmm. And Carl's like, you know, concessions lead to resentments. And resentments will destroy your relation. I'll go have another fucking drink, grandpa. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Dude, lighten up on the lover boy, all right? You're you're in your own stash. Watch snow and get back to me. Snowfall. Watch yeah. Snowfall on FX and get back to me. Mullet. You know, concessions lead to resentments. Resentments lead to the suburbs. Uh, so the Suburbs uh, lead to movie days on Saturday, which leads back to concessions. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's all calories. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just cuts to Lindsay. There are these little go-karts that we saw them assemble last week. And Lindsay's on one, and she just like speeds across the yard and then like spins out into a into like a break. She like drifts or something. She's like, ah! And Carl's like, hey, that was awesome. You did so good. Ha! You did so good, Linz. And Carl's telling us, I was like hesitant to give my true feelings on the situation because Kyle was so supportive to me and Amanda in our situation. But when I look back on that, it's like Amanda didn't do anything wrong. I was just an idiot. So he was like supporting me saying like things are going great. But like this one, Lindsay's psycho. So it's not really apples to apples. You know? So then Jesse Solomon tells Carl, he's like, for the record, I love you, man. I mean, I just met you like three weeks ago, but I love you. And I love Lindsay and I've enjoyed getting to hang with her, but I just want to make sure you guys are going to be good together. You know, and Carl's like, yeah, oh, thanks, man. Oh, thanks, man. Oh, hey, hey, Lindsay, good job. She just did a figure eight. Oh, yeah, she's so good. We're in love. I actually, sorry, I'm just sitting with Kyle, what Kyle said. I think Kyle and Lindsay have a lot more in common than he thinks. I mean, I think their situation is both like we're getting old and this is it. I'm going to marry what's right in front of me. Yes, this is it. What if I don't find any? And I'm not saying that the person that they want to marry isn't good enough. I just think it's glaringly obvious that it wasn't right in both situations. And they're like, I'm going to make it work because I'm old. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think for Kyle, it's like, I'm going to make it work because I need a graphic designer. So there's like more go go karts and flip cup and high fives. It's like fun stuff. And Kyle like wants to ride the tricycle into the pool, be like evil Knievel and everything. And then Carl's like, now he's on a go kart and he goes up to Lindsay's like, hey, want to ride? She's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna sit on you. Don't fall in the pool. We're so in love. Yeah. So they make a ramp to push this thing over the pool into a ramp. And uh, Jesse's hitting on a girl. He's like, hey, do you model? Because <laughs> I would buy whatever you're modeling. <laughs> and then Kyle's doing his thing. And Kyle Kyle goes up the ramp. And he goes in the pool. He does it and everything. So then uh, Paige and Craig are now in a room. Time to gossip. So Can I just say <laughs> these people are sadder. Not Craig and Paige. But the people at the party. Don't they seem much sadder every year? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it used to be like, oh my god, look at all these hot people in the Hamptons, and now it just looks like Tom Sandoval invited everybody. Yeah, they are. It's yeah, it's weird. So Paige is like, hey, Craig, you know what we should do? We should do like my Saran Wrap prank now, so that like when everyone's like wasted and like trying to go into their rooms, they'll just like smack right into it. Wouldn't that be hilarious? He's like, I don't even know what it means, but yeah, let's do it. So they're gonna start putting a Saran Wrap on doors that like this allegedly is people won't see. This is stupid, and also it made me furious for the landlords because what are you doing? Pinning it into the door frames, like nailing it. What are you doing? How are you getting it to stick there? You're putting something into the wood. They put tape. Okay? They put tape up. I saw it. It was tape. Okay, tape's acceptable. But the other the thing that they're supposed well, the saran wrap prank. The saran wrap prank is to saran wrap the toilets, and then when uh, people go sit down to pee right. or whatever, they pee all over themselves. <laughs> Duh. Or isn't there also, you can like saran wrap the floor and then you put like Vaseline on it and they walk in and slip, <laughs> but that's probably dangerous. Yeah, I guess that's, I guess mine would have pee pee everywhere and yours would have murders. So, mine would eh, have you know, okay, you know what, you guys go back with your tape. You, you're good, wholesome kids. So then Amanda goes up to Kyle. And I'm like, like, isn't it where you wait till someone's sleeping and then wrap their head in saran wrap and watch them suffocate? <laughs> <laughs> the most dangerous pranks ever. So Amanda goes up to Kyle and she's like, go change, go change. And he's like, can we hang out? Yeah, but be different though, because this isn't doing it for me. I can see your little penis head. Go change. Here's the problem with Amanda. She uh, She's explicitly stating 
her desires for Kyle, and they're never going to come true. Her saying go change, it's been years now. He's not going to change. Whether it's clothes or personality, I think it's time to exit this highway. It's so funny, though, how she's like, this is positive, Amanda. Because she's like being fun and flirty. She's like, Kyle, look how fun I'm having, how much fun I'm having now. And that's why alcohol always needs to be in this relationship. Because she has to be wasted to like be okay with Kyle. Right. So, um... Paige and Craig uh, are doing their saran wrap thing, and then t- they can't just wait for people to run into it, because what fun is that, you know? So they start bringing it. They're like, hey, you need to come up to our room. Sierra, Sierra, you need to come up to the room. We have something really important to tell you. Don't look straight ahead. Just kind of look down when you come into the room. Do it really fast, though. <laughs> Walk fast and authoritatively around the corner. So Sierra walks in and just like walks under the saran wrap, because the saran wrap is like very obviously saran wrap in a doorway <laughs> it's like very obviously an obstacle at face level so she's like you think i'm not gonna see that you dumb asses i'm in my giggle era so then they're like okay I felt let's like try that this was again. a direct threat to hannah didn't you i was like i'm coming for your spot on giggly squad yeah, yeah. i think she was like and i'm coming for you next um uh, hannah <laughs> also if you guys are gonna saran wrap doors you need to not wrinkle the saran wrap that's but- the thing keep it wide <laughs> That's that's a tall order, though, isn't it? It's very hard it was, to do. But don't have Craig be in charge of the ripping yeah, the saran the wrap. Have you seen he, Craig try and open a bottle of wine? Don't you, leave him in charge. Well, you know that they probably put it up. Paige probably put it up, and it was pristine and barely visible. And then Craig's like, that looks great. And then he probably walked right into it and dented it all up. It's like, chicken, you're not supposed to actually fall for the prank that you just set up. Sorry, I, you just did it so good. Actually, I wouldn't. I wouldn't assume that Paige is great with saran wrap either for some reason. She doesn't seem like a, you know what I'm going to do? Keep this for tomorrow. I just don't see her doing that (laughs) with anything. I don't think, though, that she likes um, wrinkled fabric or materials, though. She's like, she's literally wearing my Ross dress for less. (laughs) Okay, I take it back. I take it back. You did make, you did mention this. Um, so then they're like, okay, it didn't work with Sierra. So let's get someone who's really wasted and probably doesn't understand what's going on. So they're like, Kyle, Kyle, come up here. So Kyle comes up and then they don't even decide to like chance it. Sierra grabs him and just like shoves him into the saran wrap. <laughs> He's like, you sluts. So now Amanda and West are hanging out talking about his hurt nose that jealous Kyle caused when he saw somebody going faster and blonder than him and pushed him <laughs> on her. <laughs> and um, yeah. And so uh, Amanda's saying that Wes and Sierra are getting to know each other on a different level by living in the same house. That's like really cool and stuff. And then Wes is saying how, you know, they're more than just friends, but they're going really slowly. And, you know, he understands why, but he didn't come in the house to be celibate. But although he's fine. He's fine doing it with her, being a celibate with her, but he's also a warm blooded man. So, He's horny. Uh, so um, now he's like, yeah, you know, I mean, Kyle's telling me, like, what are you thinking? And Amanda goes, just ignore Kyle. Kyle's trash. She's so mean. Like, I'm sorry. Kyle is no angel. But, like, she's, I w- like, I literally, I would never, I can't even imagine saying that about Dom. Like, I literally it's cannot. That's just how some people live. Listen, yeah, I don't like it either. Just... It's extremely uncomfortable to watch, but people have different love languages. And this is one. My parents have this kind of love language where it's just like constant, like, you're an idiot. And he's like, God, I love her. I mean, I don't understand <laughs> it really, but it's their thing. I don't, I don't know what they would do without each other. You know, that's like a love letter from my mom is being like, yeah. you fucking moron i told you this would happen he's like oh my god are we renewing our vows right now i love you (laughs) she's like "Uh, you know what just because kyle's married doesn't mean he knows what he's talking about just have fun this summer don't put pressure on anyone or have anyone put pressure on you kyle sorry just had to burp that one out (laughs) by the way amanda's constantly putting pressure on every single person Oh, so Wes, how's it going with Sierra? Are you committed to Sierra yet? Are you going to marry Sierra? What if Sierra wants to have babies? Are you going to have babies? Are you ready to have babies? What if Sierra's pregnant right now? Come Wes, on. do you want to move to New Jersey with me? Come on, we could be near my mom and dad. They're going to make you Capri Sun drinks. <laughs> Kyle and Carl are driving in the Corvette. 
And Kyle's like, could you imagine, like, imagine it's like 1986 right now. And Carl's like, oh, this is an 86. He's like, it is an 86. He's like, oh, it's an 86. <laughs> That's the same year that Lindsay was born. Crazy, uh, sorry. right? Sorry to interrupt. I'm just uh, on the lawn. Did you mean to say 26, like 1926? Or did you mean 86? Just just want to remind everyone Lindsay's really old. Honestly, okay, when we're talking about Lindsay's age, it could be any one of those Yellowstone spinoffs. And I would believe it. <laughs> when you said eight, Lindsay was born in 86, or do you mean she is 86? Just want to clarify for future shade. Uh, uh, it's like, okay, I want to talk to you. Because Lindsay and I are getting married. On November 17th. Uh, By the way, you're getting married during people's Thanksgiving breaks. That's not cool. <laughs> yeah, it's November what do you marriage. Think? Yeah. Well, it's like, it's actually, I'm not mad at this because it's before Thanksgiving. It's not on Thanksgiving. I don't think Thanksgiving was the 17th. You know what? I'm actually want to go see when Thanksgiving was. But people have to travel for Thanksgiving the next week. So it's like they have to go to your thing and then they have to go to that thing. That's too, that's too, that's Let's asking see. too much. Thanksgiving in 2023 was on when was it not not the movie i don't care about the movie when is it was november 23rd oh that's oh, so see what i mean wait a second i'm scrolling this really bothers me okay 17th okay so this, this is the weekend before thanksgiving yeah that's shitty because you're traveling that whole thanksgiving weekend that's like a half a week so you have to go to this wedding the weekend before and then you have to have it's too much time off you know what it's you know what it screams up to me Hmm. It's probably not a weekend that many people have weddings because of the things that you just said. It's Wednesday Which meant wedding. that probably, it's probably like, oh, like the, the you know, Cabo, Cabo San Lucas, uh, you know, Holiday Inn offered us a special for this room. They were, they probably got a good deal. Someone probably reached out and was like, we'll give you like a free free something or another if you you know give us ample promotion and all but here's the materials. thing they were supposed to get married in mexico so you're making everybody fly to mexico and then they're supposed to get back and then travel again for that's too much you guys are selfish and i'm glad it didn't work out there i firmly Said believe it. i firmly believe that they're yeah i i hate weddings on vacation weekends i think that's like the worst thing you can do and i understand the logic of oh okay well this way you don't have to take off work but the point is that, like, I think people would actually love an excuse to take off work and then also have a vacation weekend. So, like, don't ruin people's vacation weekends. Don't do it before Thanksgiving. Because the issue with Thanksgiving is that the Thanksgiving weekend starts basically on Tuesday or Wednesday. So that's annoying. So people, just be mindful when you plan your fucking weddings. Here's, here's what we should do. We should learn from COVID. Get married on Zoom. Okay? Just get fucking married on Zoom and send us all some DoorDash to watch it while you're yeah. there okay i can give random... i can give you a shitty speech from the comfort of my own home <laughs> i'm in <laughs> suddenly i love weddings again it's time for a commercial it's time for a crappens commercial well i'm getting to that age now ronnie where i see myself on camera and i can see the back of my head the hair is thinning out and honestly, I mean, I have to imagine that the past few years, the stress in our world, in our lives, has impacted it. I mean, your hair is never just about your hair, and Nutrafol knows that. It could be your job, your deodorant, your hormones. It could be almost anything that has almost nothing to do with your hair. And that's why Nutrafol takes a whole body approach to hair health, addressing the problems inside to help hair grow on the outside, supporting your lifestyle, not just your hairstyle. With Nutrafol, building a hair growth routine is simple. Purchase online, no prescription or doctor's visits required. Free shipping and automated deliveries ensure you will never miss a day. See results in three to six months. Address your root causes of hair thinning with Nutrafol. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code CRAPINS. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code CRAPINS. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code CRAPINS. This podcast is supported by FedEx. FedEx offers fast delivery, more visibility, simple returns, and weekend home delivery to 98% of the U.S. population on Saturday and 50% on Sunday. With FedEx, you get picture proof of delivery, ensuring you always know where your package is. Returns are simple with packageless and paperless returns. Plus, FedEx Ground is also faster to more locations than UPS Ground. 
See the FedEx service guide for delivery information. So what are you waiting for? See what FedEx can do for your business. Absolutely, positively FedEx. Okay, so they're talking about Lindsay being born. Okay, so he's like, oh, so we're going to get married on November 17th. Um, I really wanted you to be part of our wedding. So get this, get this. Hold on. Hold on to that mullet, big boy. All right, more life, more life coming. I would like to ask you, Kyle, to be my flower boy, my wedding. <laughs> what do you think about that? Yeah, we got Andrea and Luke and Neil Flower Boy. Isn't that hilarious? And Kyle's like, oh, great. So uh, two models and me. <laughs> so uh, so you have a groom, you have groomsmen, but I'm not a groomsman. Is that what you're saying? Like, yeah. yeah. No, uh, your role no, is to be a flower boy. You're a flower, flower boy. boy. A flower boy. Oh. Kyle's like, oh. Well, deciding on groomsmen, uh, it's been a little bit of a process. And this is what he's telling us. I, I have a lot of friends. Um, and the producer says, well, is it a demotion? Feels like a demotion. And he's like, um, well, look, uh, I mean, this is like how I really deep down feel. Lindsay didn't want Kyle to be a groomsman. So did it come out of her mouth? I don't want Kyle to be a groomsman. No, but because of what Kyle, see, see what Carl fucking does. This is such thing. a dick move of Carl coming on TV and acting like, oh, this is all Lindsay. I had nothing to fucking do with it. Really? Do you not remember Kyle coming on last year and telling everybody that you, you had what you, what he's done for you and how coked you, how coked out you were at lover boy and shitting all over you the same year all this shit was going down with you like do you not remember that do you remember how kyle has not supported your your fucking relationship for one second and you're acting like this is all lindsay i'm sure lindsay didn't want kyle to be your groomsman and i'm sure you 100 percent agreed with that but now that you know you're having your escape season you're going to come up here and try to victimize yourself like you're just oh poor innocent carl never makes any bad decision in his life it's all that which in his life what are you gonna I, do without a scapegoat carl what are you gonna do carl i yeah i thought this was weak sauce as they say uh because if carl had said listen i love kyle but what he said last season it kind of it really messed me up that really damaged that damaged a lot of things and i understand that i was in his wedding but that it's, it's hard for me to, to put him in like a high level at my wedding i had been like okay i get it but the fact that he sort of doesn't say that, and he's like, well, I know Lindsay doesn't want him. And like, she didn't even say it, but I could just like tell. It's so, it's just like passive aggressive and just like passing the buck. And just like, it's so non-confrontational in such a gross way. Um, I just think it's like shitty. I think it's actually really shitty to, shitty to Lindsay and shitty to Kyle. Yeah. Um, he's just, he's so bad. He's literally just walking from group to group, like, I'm just an innocent little victim and building his case against Lindsay, who, by the way, is an easy person to build a case against because she's a fucking nutcase. She's Lindsay. I, so. And I, by the way, I actually think that Lindsay would not tell Carl not to have Kyle as a groomsman. I really don't think she would do that. I think she I think, would be like, oh, really? And you think he should be a groomsman after how he treated our relationship? And after last year, how he called me a bitch in front of everybody? Because they show a clip of that later. Mm -hmm. um, I can see her 100% doing that, but I could also see Carl being like, you're totally right. And he would be justified in saying, listen, I know that I was in your wedding, but I supported your wedding and you don't really support mine. <laughs> like, let's face it. You don't. Right. You Lindsay Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I can imagine Lindsay saying all those things, but I also, I just don't, in a weird way, I don't see Lindsay saying like, you're not allowed to have him. I think she would say like, you can have whoever you want. And she would voice whatever, but like, well, he's saying that. He's saying she didn't literally say that he couldn't do it. Yeah, but I think that what bothers me is that, like, he is just taking himself out of the equation in this situation. If he even, if, if he had even said, you know what, I, I, I believe that Kyle, like, it would make, it would make my fiance uncomfortable to have Kyle as a groomsman after what he said. So I'm doing this because even though she said I don't have to, I'm doing this because I want her to be comfortable. That would be better, but that not just like, oh, well, she doesn't want it. She didn't say it, but she doesn't want it. So I'm not gonna do it. It's like, really? That's it's very so Teddy. Shitty. It's very Teddy from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Like, oh, well, she didn't tell me to bring the dog stuff out on camera and attack Dorit, but I knew that she wanted me to. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> 
Okay, yeah. Teddy. I mean, when you're getting compared to Teddy by me, that's pretty low. And I think, in general, I like Carl. And I see the the rough times he's gone through and, and all that. But I just don't. Carl's, this whole turn by Carl is, I'm just not fucking buying it. I'm I think sorry. It's, and by the way, I honestly... I do think it's shitty that Kyle is not a groomsman. Even if he's not supportive, he doesn't have to be best man. He doesn't have to officiate. But like the fact that he's not a groomsman, I think it's like, I think that's shitty. Yeah. Kyle said like a dick, said a dick thing about, he called Lindsay a psycho. Yes. The, the cocaine moment was really reprehensible, but they also like squashed it. They talked it out. And the truth was that like, Kyle has really been there for Carl for many years. And I just, I think it's shitty. I think it's really shitty all, all the way around. Yeah, but don't you see what this does? Carl's saying, well, you can't be a groomsman. And he's not saying that Lindsay didn't, you know, he's like hinting that it's Lindsay or whatever. And so now it's like villainizing Lindsay even more. So when Carl makes his escape, I mean, he's, he's really laying down the foundation pretty well, I think. Yeah. So yeah, the I guests are leaving the party, and Lindsay and Carl are flirting. It's like, what is your favorite thing that you did today, Carlito? And he's like, honestly, it was opening the, up the door and uh, seeing your face. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and then Lindsay's like, no, it's like serious. I was excited to see you. And she's like, Hi. she does this like weird, like squeaking, bubbly laugh. I can't even do it. I so know. she's like, I'm just a girl, a girl who's in love. And he's like, I'm just a man, a man who can think of nothing but his lady. Now so you talked Paige, about, by the, by the way, you talked about here about how you're like, I, I can't imagine the, the owners of the house watching the saran wrap go up on the door. For me, I had that experience here with Paige riding around in the go-kart indoors and smashing into yeah. the wainscoting, wainscoting. Yeah. She's like, I love this house. Boom. Like <laughs> slams right into the, the brand new stuff. The brand new floorboards or whatever. Drunk driving in the kitchen. So then we see Jesse FaceTiming uh, some girl. He's like, hey, it's me, Jesse. Show me a nap. Show me a nap. Come on. Show me your boobs. <laughs> and then um, Paige is, Craig is like, chicken, I'm tired. Me too, chicken. I'm tired of this, grandpa. How did you do this week after week with like the same people and everything? I'm like, sir, you're on Southern Charm. You go to a cabin with Shep and Austin like every other episode. Yeah. So Kyle is snacking because he's Kyle. And then uh, we go to Lindsay and Carl in their room. And she's like, me, ma'am. He goes, oh, let me go. So, Sleepy Joe. Are you Sleepy Joe? She's like, oh, my God, babe. He's like, babe. Babe. <laughs> babe. Sleepy Joe. Babe. 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 babe, remember when I used to say I loved you to the moon and back? Oh, I don't believe that anymore. But anyway, babe, love you. Oh. I love you to the sleepy Joe and back. Put your sleepy <laughs> way. Put, put your sleepy Joe on me. <laughs> now Jesse's like in bed, like half asleep, just still Facetiming with the girl. Going, let me see your tit. <laughs> He's like, let me see boobs. So just with straight boobs. <laughs> So then Amanda calls Paige from her room and she's like, did you surround around my door? It was just around my door handle. I think you did it wrong. This was done so poorly. I thought Kyle did it. Kyle. Paige goes, yeah, I saran wrapped your door and Kyle ran right the fuck into it. <laughs> and he was not pushed into it whatsoever by Sierra. It was a great prank and everyone <laughs> loved it. <laughs> so now Amanda calls Kyle and she's like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm eating cherries and listening to some Hans Zimmer. <laughs> God, I kind of feel bad for the people in that house because we, you know, obviously all the licensed music they edit out, but you know, people are sitting up there listening to freaking the Inception soundtrack while they're trying to go to sleep because Kyle's blasting it in the kitchen. It's just the, just the fact that, the, Kyle is going through it to that level that he's in the kitchen drunk <laughs> eating cherries, which is healthy, and listening to Hans Zimmer, which is not techno. Like, <laughs> not what Hans is Zimmer going on with him? That's just wild. What's the. Uh, oh, never mind. Go oh. ahead. So, uh, yeah, people are going to sleep and everything, and Wes knows a little achy. And then Sierra goes, you know, I liked Clay Aiken back in the day, which is funny because you were just talking about Clay Aiken on the valley. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's why it came into my head. Yeah. So it's the mo next morning. Everyone wakes up, and Paige is like, "Did you have a fun? Did you have fun this weekend, Chicken?" He's like, "Yeah, thanks for having me, Chicken. You're welcome, Chicken. Inviting me to play with all your friends, Chicken. They're pretty cool, aren't they, Chicken? Yeah, Chicken." 
And then over in the other room, Carl and Lindsay are in bed. Lindsay's like, come on, where do my pillow? He's like, your pillow's kind of goofy. <laughs> yeah, because I'm goofy. Yeah, well, I'm goofy too. Yeah, babe. Yeah, babe. Yeah, babe. <laughs> yeah, babe. <laughs> We're so in love. Can't wait to leave you. So then Craig yeah. and Paige <laughs> are talking about how this e- this summer's easier. And Paige is like, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I'm even talking to Lindsay, which is crazy. I was like, this is how it should be because I've known her for six years. And like this week, she's been super chill. And Craig's like, yeah, because like chill Lindsay is great. Like, it's great. I love that Craig is another one who's like, oh, I'm so at peace now. I'm Craig. I'm Craig yeah. who hasn't had a drink this season yet. You know, he's like, oh, man, that Lindsay sure is chaos when she's got a little drink in her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. Like, you understand we've been watching you on television for 10 years now, sir. Okay. Well, you know what? When she's chill, she's so chill. When you can just, like, get her in that rocking chair after she's just watched Matlock, she's just the most relaxing person. Yeah, she's, like, down for anything. Down I mean, to be fair, she's chilly in the summer because she's old. <laughs> she always feels a draft. So um, so I also saw Carl and Lindsay in a different light this weekend because like where I legit like feel so bad for them. Oh my god, I like I'm sorry I keep smiling about their downfall, but like it's just so fun. Um I was like, wow, your situation is like so fucked and like you can't even see it because Lindsay was like, Is that intense that like what me and Carl are going through? And I was like, hey, yeah, just a little bit. Oh my god, I'm like literally orgasming right now. Yeah, well, I think they have a couple of issues to work out. And you said that their compromise is that one person comes out here and another stays home so they can have fun. And in my head, I'm like, you should be having more fun when the other person is there. Okay, you guys are still kind of new, though. You know what I mean? I'm glad that Paige and Craig are happy. They both seem so cute. And they definitely seem like happier people with each other. Yeah. Just not every couple's like that. I mean, go tell Amanda the same thing, you know? <laughs> Just line all the couples up and say, listen, you're miserable. You can all do better. Let's make an effort here. Yeah. And Paige is like, um, every summer, I feel like someone's planning a wedding and it makes me feel like, is this what it is? It's crazy. People are stupid and unfashionable too. But that's a different issue. So then Kyle's telling Amanda that Carl wants him to be a flower boy. And Amanda's like, huh, maybe he took you for a flower girl because your hair is so long. Ah, speaking of flowers, I want a backyard, Kyle. <laughs> and Kyle's like, this feels like a demotion coming from the best man and officiant at my wedding. It's not a demotion if it wasn't your job. You know what I mean? They keep saying demotion, like Carl had a bigger job, so then Kyle's being demoted, but you didn't have the same job. So it wasn't a demotion. You were originally given this shitty job. So just accept it. So he's like, at the end of the day, you get nothing for nothing, and that's all you can say for the life of the poor. And he needs my support, so I'm not going to like question anything. I'll be the best damn flower boy he's ever seen. I love you. Go shower. You stink. So now everyone's in the kitchen, Sunday morning, and there's just like, uh, Wes and Sierra are, are, are hugging, and Sierra like opens up his bandage to check his wound. She's like in her nurse mode, and Paige is like, oh my God, wait, she's looking, wait, oh my God, I can't believe this. Two dysfunctional couples and a wound. This is like the best page weekend ever. <laughs> oh my God, your nose look like Lin- your nose looks like Lindsay's relationship. It's amazing. Can I get a picture of it? <laughs> and by that, I mean, it's so fucking gross. And Craig's like, no, it looks great. Come on, chicken. It's like, okay, just like walk it off, whatever. So back to the city time. So Lindsay and Carl's apartment. Carl's like, oh, you ready for the berries? She's like, Carl, who are you talking to? Oh, sorry. It was the cardboard, yo. God damn it. <laughs> so weird. I'm in love with this thing. I feel like I'm going to have to start going. Two days? Oh, babe, look, we're in love. I just finished your sentence. Two days. Yeah. Babe, I think you look great just the way you are. But if you want to go two days, like, awesome. She's like, I know, but like, I just want to look even better for you. Like, I want you to cry when I walk down the aisle. Oh, I already cry every day when I see you. Great. And I want I want you to get a boner when you see me at the reception. That'll be a harder task. That's rougher, but I can promise you I will cry if we make it that far. <laughs> They're like, why? <laughs> I literally just finished sobbing into your arms, except it was your cardboard arms. Sobbed to the wrong Lindsay again. Oh, so confusing. <laughs> Damn it, I just broke up with the cardboard Lindsay. <laughs> I have to work up the, the, the uh, have to work up the gumption to get that done again. Real quickly, uh, is your wedding dress just a nurse costume? Because that will definitely give me a boner on the dance floor. <laughs> literally just lost a boner when i turned away from cardboard Lindsay, but whatever <laughs> hey you look cardboard by the way and it's hot love you <laughs> i didn't uh, like that when she was like um i just want to look even thinner for my wedding and i need to look even more perfect for you i want th- you're supposed to say i don't care if you're like five thousand pounds i'm in it for your heart i love you to the moon and back yeah yeah 
Um, I think she's just like trying to be like, uh, hello, is this thing on? Uh, <laughs> are you attracted to me? What's going on here? What do I have to do? Come on. How much so berries now- do I need to do to get fucked around here? Okay. <laughs> Christ's sake. Yeah. So then uh, everyone's in the kitchen and um, well, Wes now we go is- to the burbs. Oh, yeah, we're in the burbs. I'm sorry. Thank you. I missed that part. It's a Kyle and Amanda scene. Sometimes I'm just, my eyes just start, all the floaters in my eyes come together at once. They're like, please don't do this to us. <laughs> please. So now we're in the burbs, somewhere in New Jersey. Not sure where. I would have loved to have known where. And so Kyle and Amanda pull up to a, a house. Now, this is like nice suburbia. This is not like uh, McMansion suburbia. This is like waspy Richville, right? So they pull up to a really nice house that has a big ass backyard and um, Amanda is like very excited. And this, the realtor, Kyle, the realtor's name, Kyle too. It's so, future Kyle, by the way, it's it like Kyle, Kyle in the very near future, isn't it? He's like all yeah. blonde and tan and white toothed. So Amanda's like really excited because Kyle decides he wants to look at houses and everything. And uh, Kyle, um, Kyle walks in and he says the thing that we all said, the, you know, at the, on the summer house premiere, which is, wow, it is white. Dang. It is white. It really is. And it's a, you know, it's like a tiny little house, but a hu- it's a huge backyard. And he's like, it's 1500 square feet. And Amanda's like, oh my God, it's like a dream. No, 1500 square feet. You guys want to start popping out those kids? No, it needs to be bigger. But yeah. I think when you're coming from the city, it's like, oh my God, that's so, that's so huge. You know? Yeah, it's a really it's a really nice house though. It's pretty, yeah. Uh, and then they look but at the yard. Much? Why don't they tell us how much it is? I know. So uh, it's the, the the yard is huge back there. There's a pool and everything, and you know it's nice. And then Kyle goes, "I just I never saw myself living in New Jersey." And then music becomes like Jaws music. Did you notice this? The music was like dun 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 dun. dun, dun. It's like Jersey is coming to lure Kyle in and clutch it in his clutch him in its jaws and trap him in there for the rest of his life. You just see Kyle slowly freaking out. Like this is his horror movie. You know, now he's being dragged out to the burbs, which he does not want. And he's like, I mean, uh, change is supposed to be fun. I think moving provides short term relief from our current situation, which is a little bit of a broken record, but then we're cut off from New York. And then some of the current challenges in our relationship will rear their ugly head. And I don't know. It's already happening. Yeah. I think it's time to get out of this relationship before you get into like house issues. Like once, the, once a house is involved, it's just going to get even more messy. I think this is it. This is it. Get out now. This is you in danger, Run. girl. <laughs> Run. So but I also think he does not, like I said last week, he does not want to live in New Jersey. This is not how Kyle sees himself. He is a Connecticut. He is a Fairfield, Connecticut man or upper Westchester, but he is not in New Jersey. I think that drinking as heavily as Kyle drinks is not going to work really anywhere except the city. I don't think you can just come home and drink like that at home all the time. You can't be the guy at the neighborhood party in the burbs that drunk all the time when people have kids and all that stuff. It just doesn't it doesn't work the same way. I think he's not going to be able to do this burb thing until he's really ready to be. And I don't say I'm not saying be sober completely, but he's going to definitely have to be like, okay, my partying time is up. I'm not on summer house anymore. I'm not going to be getting shit faced in cities across America because I own a booze company every single weekend or whatever he's doing. He's going to have to change that whole lifestyle. Cause this, this, yeah. this ain't going to work in the burbs. It's not. So now it's Thursday and it looked like Wes and Sierra were going on a date. Cause they show up at this place together and uh, the, the waitress comes up to them, and I love this, because she goes, Hi, guys. Welcome to Somewhere Nowhere. Which I was like, that is the perfect phrase for like so many of these relationships and careers on this show. And so many of the personalities on this show in general. It's like, who, <laughs> who even am I watching right now? Somewhere Nowhere. Somewhere Nowhere. <laughs> I know. That's what I feel like when I watch this. I'm Somewhere Nowhere. Somewhere Nowhere. So Sierra brought, she made banana bread and brought it in her purse, which I feel like is such a model thing to do. Like I made banana bread, but I didn't want to keep it in the house. So I brought it in my purse. So everybody else will have to eat it. You know, this is like, I I feel like we're seeing a new side of Sierra where she bakes things and brings it places. I feel like, I feel like Sierra from two years ago would never do such a thing. Hmm. Um, So then Wes, then Jesse Solomon shows up and he's like giving, compliments to Sierra and she's like he always gives the nicest compliments and then Danielle shows up I felt bad because I feel like I forgot that Danielle was on the show over the course of the past episode and a half I was like oh yeah Danielle 
That's right. Danielle's on this show. So Sierra is about to sign a modeling contract with Supreme and love their skateboards. And Sierra's, um, she's like, I thought I wasn't going to make it, but I did. And Danielle's like, um, I worked over the weekend, but I also hooked up with a drummer. Yeah. Party. One party. (laughs) And Wes goes, Oh, could he bang it out? Get it? She goes, yeah, yeah, he could. He could. Yeah. 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 It's like, I was just making a pun. I didn't really need an answer to that. (laughs) Does he have a good stick? And she's like, yeah, yeah, you got it. You you got a party. (laughs) <laughs> and Jesse's like, okay, well, congrats on the sex. I'll tell you, he's not having sex. Sierra and West. Okay. <laughs> Sierra's like, uh, excuse me. Are you kidding me? Announcing my business? He's like, well, when are you going to have sex with my friend? And she's like, never at this rate. And West is like, um, I don't know if bro code is real, but if you're my friend, if you're friends with Jesse Solomon, it's definitely not real. And I was like, I can't believe like I told him and he, and he like immediately like announced it to Jesse, like grilled, Je- uh, grilled, uh, Sierra right away. But, same time, I'm like, mm, keep going because I want answers. So they're going to take it slow. And then we got to enter Carl's store. All the guys are gathering because we got to try on suits for this wedding that is completely, totally going to happen. <laughs> so I'm going to wear a wedding suit and it's going to be the only time on this show you're ever going to see me have the opportunity to wear white pants and choose cream instead, inexplicably. <laughs> what the yeah. hell is that? You, you wear white pants literally every day. You're having a white wedding and you're choosing cream pants. Who are you even? <laughs> I know. And then we, we hear Trixie as he walks in going, watch me, watch me go up, go up. I'm the greatest of all time. It's like Carl walking to discount suit like Emporium. So, um, <laughs> so, so these guys, these, uh, these six guys are going to be coming in. Well, and welcome then- you to the sober suit store. Sober discount suit store, guys. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Hello there. So Andrea comes. He's like, oh, hello, Carl. I got to be a gentleman. Ladies first. Hello, ladies. Hello, so many. Hello, 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 hello. And he kiss, kisses her hand. So then uh, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting suited up and trying on different jackets. And it's definitely starting to get really real right now. Huh. I'm trying to imagine these jackets on the beach in Mexico. I mean, are loafers going to work? And are the guys going to be comfortable? Because it's going to be toasty. It's going to be toasty. Yeah. And um, so everyone's there. And like, there's a bunch of like unfamous no ones in this in this party and then kyle is there and he's like uh yeah so like by the way like usually the flower boy is like the youngest kid or a girl i should say and andrea's asking him how he felt and kyle's like well i was a little confused and taken aback i mean don't take this the wrong way andrea but like i've known carl for a decade i mean i've I've been undermining him for so many years you know and i had a guy officiate my wedding and he was my co-best man and everything in my mind i'm like i've been one of your best friends for a hot minute like it takes a best friend to be able to air out all your cocaine issues on national TV, am I right? Mm. But I'm okay with it. It's just like sad Carl moping in a mullet. Commercials. Here comes one right now. Welding instructor Alex DeClaire knows VR training platforms like ForgeFX help students master their skills. There's a big learning curve with welding. Virtual reality simulates that exact muscle memory that they need. Learn more at meta.com slash metaverse impact. And then uh, it's Friday and now Kyle and, and Amanda are picking. Oh, no. Kyle picks up Andrea first and uh, they talk about Lexi and, you know, make small talk. And they talk about how they had boys night and they ended up going out after Kyle took the boys out and he was out late. Now he's in trouble. Yeah, it's Amanda. very rare. It's very rare for him to go out in the middle of the week, but he got home at like 4 a.m. and woke up Amanda and she was mad. So then in another uh, car, Paige is driving with Jesse and Paige is like, um, so we're going to have like a very Italian weekend, Italian weekend this weekend. And I'm like really excited. Look, look at me. Look how excited I am. <laughs> and then Jesse's like, yeah, so what's going to make this Italian aside from tonight's extravagant dinner? Well, I'm wearing Prada. So that's basically it. I'm just going to wear Italian designers. It's like, well, now that uh, Jesse and Craig are fast friends, I do want to get to know him better. And I don't want it to be awkward between the two of us. You know, it's got to be really hard for him to be sitting next to something he can't have. So <laughs> as random as this car ride is, I feel like it's my duty to be nice to the new guy and make sure he feels comfortable and welcome. 
and make sure he stays in love with me because surely at some point Craig is going to care and it's going to cause some kind of trouble that'll bring us closer together because it's basically a movie. We'll see. We'll see okay. That. And let me see if I can also uh, press him for some dirt. So, by the way, um, how was boys' night when you guys all went out for Kyle's, um, uh, for Carl's wedding thing, huh? How was that? He goes, oh, yeah, I didn't go. Oh, were you not invited? Please tell me you weren't invited. Oh, my God, this will be so great. He wasn't invited. Oh, my God, I can't wait to tell everyone. He's like, no, no, I was invited. Damn it. <laughs> but I had plans with the lucky lady. Oh, really? Oh, go on. Tell me more. Good for, like, her. Wow, good, for good for her. Good for her. Good for her. Good for you, too. He's like, <laughs> uh, almost cut her from the roster, but... I mean, she's just so nice, you know? I was like, ah, oh, let me give her another chance. Oh, you're just so fucking generous. This guy's such I'm a okay. fucking douche. This guy's I such know. a charming douchebag. I need to see the rest of it come out because I don't believe it. <laughs> I yeah. don't believe anybody on this show right now, but especially he getting, him. He is getting away with murder with that smile. Because all he, he's like, he's actually really terrible, but he just smiles and is like handsome and charming. So we're like, oh, Jesse Solomon. So yeah. Paige is like, okay, um, we love her. Okay, we love that. That's great. So do you think you're going to invite her to the house, to a party? I need to see her so we can, like, talk about her in the beds. Okay, so you're going to bring her, right? He's like, yeah, for sure not. For sure not. So then um, Amanda, Andrea, and Kyle are in their car. And Amanda's like, I can't believe the weekend you ended up coming is our Italian dinner weekend. That is so crazy. And you don't even have to do anything for it this time. God. Yeah, because Paige is going to get it uh, catered. It's going to be like nice and fancy. So now at the house, Paige arrives first. I love she gets out of the car and she turns to Jesse and goes, okay, grab my suitcase. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> so the caterers come and everybody starts getting to the door. And then she's like, oh, this door is so janky. Carl's like, oh, Jesus. It goes in, in on itself and it's still out. It's door's bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the door didn't want Kyle to be a broomsman. So, um, yeah, something happened with the door. It, like, warped or they replaced it, but it's, like, not opening properly anymore. So then uh, Jesse's in the backyard, and everyone's just, like, hanging out and arriving. And uh, Jesse's like, well, I'm glad you guys are here. I spent lots of hours just Paige, and boy, was it fun. Really? How many dates did you go on this week? He's like, uh, um, I can answer that. I'm like, Hello, uh, Paige here. He went on two dates, um, although would you consider Tuesday a date if it was just the club? <laughs> um, and the second date was a girl who came over and helped him back. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, uh, that's not fair. We actually went out and got tacos too, okay? And I was actually right next to the rooftop, but I was in workout clothes, so I don't know if it counts. Carl's like, uh, I thought you guys were going to come last night. Like, you could have come. I mean, it would have been fun for you to meet some of the guys. Like, that would have been great. Yeah, but I'll see them this weekend, right? Yeah, but he basically had like a bachelor party last night. And like, I walked in and it was like 17 guys. I was like, is this your bachelor party? And why is one of them holding the cardboard version of cardboard version of me? And Carl's like, oh, yeah, it's just like, yeah. So you kind of like missed out, Jesse. That's what I'm saying. But the fitting went well. Yeah. So Jesse's like, oh, really? Is Kyle a groomsman? Flower boy. Uh, Flower boy. All right. <laughs> Flower boy. <laughs> yeah. And so is Andrea. And so is Luke. Paige is like, oh, my God. Like, I know it looks like I'm just, like, sitting here listening to this conversation, but I am bursting inside. Like, Kyle, Carl, like, officiated their weddings, and now they're making him a flower boy? Like, I wonder who made that decision. This is literally the best day of my entire life. I am going to explode. I'm sorry. Hold on. Chicken, listen to this. Uh, are you on the phone with Craig right now? No. it's uh, He's just the uh, background on my phone that I'm pointing at you. It's moving. It's a light background. Just shut up. Talk about <laughs> talk about crushing Kyle. <laughs> I mean, okay, just okay, Craig. Listen to this, chicken. Listen to this. He will throw paddles as I walk down the aisle. That was my Lindsay impersonation, okay? Because like you know, that's what Lindsay thought. Like that's insane. Like I wouldn't even go. Like I would have slapped Carl in his face if he said that to me and been like, "Have fun at your wedding. See ya." I am literally like the best. I am dead. I am dead right now. <laughs> And Carl's like, well, Kyle's more of a flower boy anyway, right? I mean, it fits his personality. <laughs> and then we see Danielle struggling with the door. Um, and they're all talking about how hot it is. And then Sierra has an issue with the door. And everyone is struggling. So everyone shows up. And Andrea's like, oh, yeah, Shamoma. 
Oh my God. I hope Amanda gets to complain about Kyle. Oh, here we are. Okay. So Amanda is now with the girls and she's like, I'm just tired because Kyle came home at four in the morning and I damn near lost my mind. Like we have a chance to talk about what he did last night and we're going to do it because that was terrible. Like I can't sleep when he's not home. And then I, but then I fell asleep at like 3.30, but then he came barging in at like four. <laughs> so Paige is like, Kyle's whole thing is like, I do so many adult things and like Amanda doesn't do this and like doesn't do that. But like, you know what Amanda doesn't do? Stay up until 4 a.m. on the weeknight. Oh my God, like this. And then the flower boy thing. Like I am literally dying. Is there like a sale at Zara too? Because that would literally kill me. <laughs> I've always known Kyle to be extroverted, and that's why I was attracted to him, because he's social, but you're like, maybe once we get married, then he'll slow down. No. No. Nope. Red flag. I mean, that's like the biggest X in the world when you say, I think I can change him. You know what? All it takes is me, and then he'll be totally different. All he needs is just to get married. You know what you should do to solve these problems? Have babies, because that's the next brilliant <laughs> thing you're going to say. And let me tell you something. The burbs is not going to slow him down. Okay, because what's going to happen is Kyle will get to the burbs and then he'll make friends with all the other suburban dads and they're going to like have like like drinking nights in the basement or whatever. It's like, Kyle, are you going out to poker night again? Kyle, are your friends in the basement again? Kyle, the extra version does not go away. It is going to live in the burbs in a different form and it'll be just as annoying to her. Yeah. Um, until he's finding more reasons to travel for work and eventually cheats because he's miserable. Because you know that. that that you know that that's going to come, and then he'll be like, "But you know, I didn't want to move to the burbs. You know, I didn't want to do that. So this is all your fault." And he's going to feel justified in blaming her for everything. Yeah. Hey, um, sorry to interrupt this discussion about Kyle, but is Kyle mad about being a flower girl? If he is, could you tell me everything? Can you just like inject his rage into my veins? I just need to feel it. He was a little confused, um, so I just mocked him a lot for looking like a girl because he has long hair. Ha ha ha. He's like and even doing it with Andrea and Luke. Really? Because that's like even more insulting. Is that more insulting? Have you told him it's more insulting? You should tell him it's more insulting. Oh my God, tell him it's more insulting. He's going to have to do it with a guy who literally taps trees. That's so <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> So Kyle is showing Carl some new cans downstairs. And Carl's like, whoa, I just got the chills. Oh, but I think it's because I'm standing under a vent. Whoops. And Carl's like, yeah, like we talked about it. It's finally happening. So basically, Kyle is launching a non-alcoholic brand, which is funny. Like non-alcoholic iced tea, also known as iced tea. <laughs> non-alcoholic lemonade, also known as lemonade. We were talking about the flavored soda waters, I think. You know how everybody has like the flavored sodas. Oh, okay. Well, either way, he's making an, a non-alcoholic alternative, and he wants Carl to be part of it. And he, and he, he was it was very important to him to show it to Carl first, let him know first, like really involve him. And he, in fact, Carl's like really touched by this. And in fact, Kyle's like, by the way, like not to put you on the spot, but you know, this could be a side hustle if you want. You could like help promote this, whatever. This could be a good situation. We could have set up a rev share. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I've got to think about that. I mean, it's a huge opportunity, but like, oh, better think about it. So then he goes to put himself in his white pants and he's like, oh, these pants are way tighter than I ever thought they were. Oh, my God. They're I think it's because I feel cardboard Lindsay looking at me from home. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Get my boner down a little bit. Oh, I need a nurse. So he's like, you know, part of my concern is that it's like this offer becomes real that Lindsay won't be on board with it. And like, we're on a good streak right now. And like bringing something like this to the table could really cause more issues. And I don't want to address it at this moment. If you can't tell Lindsay about a job opportunity with Kyle, if that's going to like threaten the stability of your relationship, you are you are in, in bad shape. Feels weird to like yell at him because we know they're going to break up, but I still want to yell at him. Well, it's also, I think at this point, Lindsay would just be glad that you have a job. <laughs> because yeah, I think so. I think when she was like, I don't want you working for Kyle, that was back when she thought you were going to do something else. But now that she knows you're not, <laughs> yeah, you know, she might have changed her mind. Um, but nice job, you know, uh, I'm making waiting. her look like a terrorist for another five minutes on this episode. Fucking Carl. Right. So caterers prepping food and Kyle's like, uh, excuse me, can you point me to the mouthy ghost? <laughs> 
So they all sit at the table and Paige is like, should I do a toast? Okay. I want to have this dinner because Italy is like my fa- favorite place to go with my family. And I think of you guys all as my family and I wanted to bring it to you and have a fancy night at our home. Also, I just want to toast to all of you for being so dysfunctional. You're really filling me with so much joy. I'd love that Carl has demoted Kyle to Flower Boy. That's just like a great nuance to an already hellacious summer for you all. So thank you so much for everything you do for me. Oh, to Italy, another place where Kyle is not asked to be a groomsman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe so, it's because he looks like a girl, and so they thought because he has a mullet. All right, Amanda, we get it. God, <laughs> Kyle. So now Danielle's asking about the house search. And Amanda's saying, uh, you know, the house that we looked at. And Carl breaks hey, in. He's like, like oh, so I guess I don't get seven. <laughs> I mean, I ate yesterday, so it's fine. <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious. Anybody? And Jesse's laughing. Oh, that was good. Yo, idiots. Amanda's trying to talk. Okay. Amanda, keep talking about the horrific place that is not Italy at all that we're going to be moving to. But we'll sort of feel like Italy because it's New Jersey. All right. Come on. The floor is yours, Amanda. You don't have to be such an asshole, Kyle. What was that about, Kyle? I'm just like trying to help facilitate this conversation because apparently this is the week where we have Italian dinners on Bravo and the man shushes everyone so the wife can talk. Um, But other people have things to say too, Kyle. Why are you the only one to say it? Why are you the only one to say something, Kyle? Go ahead. So then um, Amanda's like, yeah, so I think it's going to be like an investment property and like a place where like I can get out of the city because like Kyle isn't like ready yet. But like sometimes I just need to remove myself from New York. And Lindsay just mumbles yeah, or, or from Kyle. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she's like, yeah, having some place to go for like a week or two or a month or, you know, a year. <laughs> Until my future children graduate college. I mean, you know. Stop everything. Stop. Are you telling me that on top of a weekend where Lindsay and Carl are in shambles and you guys are doing so badly and Kyle has been named a flower boy, you want to move to New Jersey for like to get away from Kyle for months at a time? Are you kidding me right now? I have so much I have to tell Chicken. This is amazing. That's it. I'm eating a carb. (laughs) (laughs) Doing it. This so is Paige is like a month at a time and Sierra goes well, yeah because Kyle's not coming with her and Amanda's like I need a change of scenery right now all, every time I try to look at nature all I see is a terrible mullet you know <laughs> and he's like oh, Amanda hates the apartment she hates the city she hates walking the dogs late at night I mean I love our apartment but she doesn't he makes some sad faces and Amanda's like yeah and we're thinking about a family and I don't want to be pregnant with all that riffraff around you know I'd be too stressed out like i want to walk the dogs and run into my parents kyle instead of hanging out with people every night you could be playing scrabble with my dad kyle's like yeah i i always thought the second the kids want a play date in the yard that's when we move kyle you're (laughs) not the one to be spending day the day with the kids (laughs) kyle yeah. And everyone's like, whoa. I love, by the way, everyone at this table is openly mocking their relationship. <laughs> They're all muttering under their breath to their faces. Well, I think it's why they have a right to say something about Lindsay and Carl's relationship, ultimately, because they have to sit there and listen to it. You know, they have mm-hmm. to listen to all the dysfunction and the toxicity. And these these couples are the worst. Oh, my God. They are the worst. So, um basically Danielle's like, Carl, are you going to compromise so that she can have what she wants? And he's like, we're thinking through it. Danielle says, that's a no in my book. (laughs) Yeah. But I don't think you want somebody to compromise to that level. That's just not, it's not good for either one of them for him, for him to move right down the street from Amanda's parents, which is going to be bloody hell. Those fucking judgy parents, which by the way, they have a right to say shit to Kyle. Kyle messed up a lot in the past, but who wants to sit down next to judgy and Mr. And Mrs. Judgy down there for that Amanda can run to and complain about every single thing that happens with Kyle, every way that Kyle fucked up. Then he's not going to be around his friends. Then he's going to be stuck. I mean, this is, it's a recipe for disaster. Don't, you in danger. This is a you in danger. I mean, we've watched this couple and every other season they have a bad season, right? They have the bad season and then they have the season where they convince us that we're, oh, you know what's so funny? I almost wore that today. Look, Ronnie's wearing, wearing look a t-shirt that says, 
says, I feel like goddamn Celine Dion right now. I That's so funny. Um, <laughs> Thank you but, for uh, the lady who gave us this shirt. That's an amazing shirt. The goddamn yeah. Celine Dion right now. Sorry, Ben, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say that like, we always see like, um, we always, like we, they always have their bad seasons. I kind of feel like in some ways this is their worst season because in the past it's like, oh, you cheated on me. And you're like, okay, like that's obviously bad, but you know they're going to still go forward or whatever. But now it's like at a level of she just hates him. She says that she likes him, but she hates him. She she has so many resentments and he has so many resent. Like they, there's never been like deep resentment like this before. And I'm like, okay, we got to throw in the flag here, guys. It's, 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 it's not working out. It's just going to get worse. Nothing. You're putting, putting good money after bad. It's not going to, it's, it's bad. It's bad. Yeah. I'm not really sure, but, uh, yeah, they've got to fix it. You and by fix, fix it. it, I mean, quit it. End it. <laughs> Cause it's ouch. over. It's painful. Well, thanks right, everyone well, thanks for everybody. being here. Yeah. yeah thanks. And uh, it's been a great week. We'll be back on Monday for more recaps, etc. Thanks for being here. And we will catch you on the next one. Uh, bye. 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 Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no Trickolus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. We forever love Ava. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish. It's Jen Plish. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo. Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a can. And Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch Your Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com/survey.